Hey Floss Tube, welcome to my channel, or I should say, hey Floss Tube viewers. My name is Doreen, and my business is Privies and Prims. Um, today is, let me see, February 27th. It is Tuesday evening, and my lighting is not great because, like I said, it's evening, but I wanted to get this video filmed, so I had actually posted on my Facebook page that I was going to film it tomorrow because I'm waiting for something to come in the mail, but then there's also something coming on Thursday, so I will just go ahead and share those things in the next video. So I wanted to get this one out today. Um, I've been really tired for the last couple days, so if I'm a little off, that's why. I've got just kind of a mismatch of things in front of me here, and I'm going to show you some stuff. So this is a channel mostly about cross stitch and punch needle. I don't do a whole lot of punch needle anymore, but I just got a package here that I'm going to show you and I do um, model punching for the shepherd's needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. So she just sent me some things to do and I'm going to show those to you. I'm also going to show you um, this kind of addiction that I just got yesterday and today and I don't know how long it's going to last but um, it'll be here for a little while and I'll get into that in a little bit. So I have um, one whip work in progress to show you and I have one finish and one fully finished so I just have not really been in the mood to do a whole lot and if you watch my channel um often you know that I'm usually very productive but this week has been kind of eh for me so um I, I don't know why I'm just I'm ready for spring I'm ready for sunshine and warm weather <laughs> So probably like a whole lot of the rest of you. So the first thing I'm going to show you is two finishes. So I don't think I showed this to you last time. My um, fully finished FFO, which stands for fully finished objects. And by the way, welcome to everybody that's coming to watch. Whether you're new here or you're a returning viewer, I appreciate all of you. I thank you for hitting that thumbs up and leaving me a comment, even if it's just a hello or a heart or a hand wave. I appreciate all of them. So this is from the Summer 2023 um, Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine. It's called Use Flag, E-W-E-S. And again, I'm not sure if I showed this last time. It may have been a work in progress last time. But um, the designer is Whitley Quimby of Sugar Maple Designs. And her website is southernstitchersco4company.com. And someone told me she has a shop. So this is my finish. I'm going to hold my hand on the bottom or the stuff will fall out. Here we go. So it's just open at the bottom. I should probably put something in there. Um, but, you know, when it's sitting, now they're falling out. When it's sitting on my cabinet, it doesn't matter because it's not getting moved and nothing's going to come out. So these pet berries, um, I got these somewhere at a wholesale place and they're red, white, and then like that mustard yellow. And here is a close up of the stitch. Now this is done on the Nate Burkus. If you've watched my videos before, I, lately I've been talking about Nate Burkus upholstery linen from Joanne Fabrics. It is a 36 count. It does have thick threads in it, as you can see. But I find it pretty easy to stitch on. I mean, when you get to those thick threads, sometimes you have just like a really thick one and a really thin one, but it, it wasn't an issue for me. And here's the bottom. The trim that I used around it is from Purple Paper Mountain, and they are on Etsy. Very reasonable prices, and she ships very quickly, like the same day or the next day. And then I just put it on an old grater. Now, I want to point out, when I showed this on Facebook, my Facebook page is Privies and Prims, and when I showed this, this bottom white line and red line right here were not there, and it was completely finished and mounted on here, and somebody pointed out to me that I was missing two stripes on the right side of the flag, and I was like, oh gosh, well, you know, it's hot glued on here, so I can't take it off, but... um and I do want to say I appreciated her telling me that. It did not bother me. It did not upset me. I would like for people to tell me if they see something like that so that uh, hopefully I can fix it. So behind this linen is a piece of warm and natural um, quilt batting. 
So I was actually able to get the needle in there and get those stitches on there and finish out that flag the way it's supposed to be. Now, I never even noticed it because it just kind of, you know, as it's flowing in the wind, it kind of looks thinner at the end anyway. But as I counted and then checked the pattern, there were supposed to be seven red stripes and there were only six. So uh, I was able to fix it and you can't even tell. So thank you to the person that told me that. And then I, these are just sitting in here as I showed you. So there's the sheep. I did use, um, instead of the, I stitched one over two, which I almost always do. And instead of using the um, called for DMC, I don't know why, but I hear other people say the same thing. That white just does not lay right. And I ended up using, let's see if I wrote it down. For the grass at the bottom, I used Weeks Dye Work Kudzu. And for the, the grass, I was going to use 3866, but I ended up using a Weeks Dye Works, I think. Let me see which one it was. Um, not parchment. Hold on, I'm looking through this massive thing here. Um, all right, I don't know which one it was. Sorry, but it was a week's dye works anyway, and it seemed to lay better than the um, DMC did. And let me see if I have any more changes written down. Instead of black, I used 3371 instead of 310 black. And instead of 304 red, I used 221, probably just because I didn't have the other one. So those are the changes that I made. Now, okay, I have another finish, and it is also from Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine, and it is summer 2023 also. And it is Long May You Stitch. And I did change the color, the lettering. I did not use green. I used a dark blue. And I didn't do these crosses and I didn't do those because mine, as you'll see, is a little close to the edges. So I only did this row under here. And for the, the blue, I used... Oh, okay. So here's the Weeks Dye Works that I used on the other one because I used it on this one too. It is Weeks Dye Works Whitewash 931. Or, I'm sorry, 10, 1091 whitewash. And then for the, where it has the green lettering, I used a blue, which is DMC 3750. So that's what I used. And this is, again, stitched on the Nate Burkus um, upholstery linen. And here it is. I like it a lot with the dark blue. I used the called for color up here at the top of the flagpole, but I did have to use a tan and back stitch around it where you couldn't even see it on this linen. So that is that finish. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one yet. Like I said, I've just been kind of like in a blah mood and haven't um, really felt like doing anything. So this is a, you can see how close it is to the edge here. So. I didn't, just in case I decide to frame it or something, I didn't want to put the X's across there and then not have any room. So I thought it was fine just to put them across the bottom. And they're not in a straight row and they're not even in a pattern. I mean, that's, but that's the way it is on the design. So it, that bothers me a little bit because I would like, like one over, one up above and then one up and then the same thing going down, but it wasn't like that. And I just did it the way it was on the pattern. So that one is a finish. And then my other finish is from, um, oh, that one is Lucy Beam. That one, the designer of that is Lucy Beam and it's also stitched one over two. This one is also stitched one over two that I'm gonna show you. And this is from Red, White and Bloom, um, Brenda Gervais. And it is this little one right here, right there. And it's not fully finished yet. There it is. I'm considering coffee staining this one because I don't like that bright white. But the red is an overdyed floss, and I have to look and check and see if it is um, color fast. 
because I don't know if it is or not. I think the colors I used were called for and I printed out a working copy that I would have made notes on, which I don't know where it is, but um, I think I used the called for colors. So, excuse me. Um, okay, so that is that finish. And I don't, again, don't know what I'm going to do with that one. So I, I did find a freebie. I'm going to be all over the place here because I'm not real organized. It's just in front of me. So I found a freebie I wanted to share with you. And it's for fall, but I printed it out so I wouldn't forget. And this is the pattern, Autumn Blessings. I really thought that was cute and very prim, very primitive. And it is, um, let me see, I think it's Sub Rosa. Actually, I can't even read it. Somethingblogspot.com, but I can't read it. But I think, yeah, it's Sub Rosa Designs on her blog. Um, and it's a freebie. She has a lot of freebies if you go to her blog. And it's up in the top right corner. If you're on your phone, you don't see it. But if you're on a computer or laptop, top left corner, you'll see a little search bar up there. A little tiny one. You can put a keyword in there and search in that. And if you just put the word free and then hit the, the magnifying glass for search, all kinds of patterns will come up. Okay, I've gotten up twice and I have to edit that part out. I keep forgetting things. Um, I wanted to show you... Before I show you my whip, I have a wool applique that I showed you a while ago that I said I was going to work on at my stitch group. So this Monday when I went to my stitch group, I didn't really feel like, you know, working on anything or starting. I didn't have anything started. I had finished the long may you stitch the night before and I didn't have anything started and didn't feel like starting anything. Um, I am a monogamous stitcher. So I grabbed this wool applique because the purpose for this is to just be able to grab it when I want to go somewhere. I don't need a magnifying glass. I can just stitch. So this is what is finished so far on here. Doing the blanket stitch. I think I got, I don't know, one or two flowers done. And then, and of course it shows up really bright on my camera and it's not. It's very prim. Um, I got part of this one sewn on because I use dabs of Aileen's tacky glue and it's been a while and it's coming off so I just wanted to attach that but I need to start using something different I don't I've tried staples I don't like it I think I'm I might get some of the little applique pins the little tiny short pins and this is the pattern I'm going to take it out because I don't think you can see it good and it's in there in case you're new to my channel this is the pattern and I am going to hang it this way on the wall so I'm probably going to put a sleeve behind it and I'm not sure about the tongues on the end if I'm going to add those or not that's probably going to be a while before that one's done because it's just kind of a grab and go thing that I just keep in this project bag and um like if I have a long wait at a doctor's or something. And this is in a project bag made for me by Old Crow Mercantile. You can't see the inside because that's where the, uh, the project is folded up. And she made this for me as a gift. Isn't that cute? Because I do have a little camper. And then the little charm that's on it says um, time to stitch. And it's like a little clock. And then there's scissors and... Some beads and a little thing that says handmade with love thank you Wanda again she made that for me last year so that is my grab-and-go thing that because I don't need magnification with it um, and a friend of mine I just have this here before I put it away I want to show you a friend of mine just gave me this it's a pretty good size piece um, piece of wool I think it's hundred percent I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but if I do some rug hooking this will probably look really good since it's a plaid. It'll look good, um, you know, because you don't see the plaid when you do row cooking. Okay, let me see. What next? Um, something that I just bought at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if y'all have seen these or used one, and these are not straight and all nice and neat. But this comes in a package. It comes with this roller, which has um, 
it's just a magnet on the back but it's a it's a seven inch ruler but it also has counts on it to count your fabric to see what count the fabric is but it only has 7 11 14 18 and 22 so um, what I was taught is it's really hard to see like a 40 count even you know with the magnet to try to do it so what I would do is like say if it's if it's a 28 count line it up to the 14 because I'm stitching over two so line it up to the 14 and then you would double that and it would be 28 if it matches the 14 if it matches the 18 doubled would be 36 and that way it's easier to see these lines which are further apart than it is on a 36 little measure ruler so but this was only four dollars and 49 cents and it's if you put it's magnetic so if you put your pattern on here and then you know you have a lot of lines you can move these to mark your place um, wherever you are on the pattern and then slide it up or down and it's just plain metal and 449 and that's what comes with it so i thought it was a good deal i don't know how much i'll use it but for that price i i decided to buy it um and i got this one this ruler which has more measurements on it these are from hobby lobby by the way and by the way um rhonda asbury went blank for a minute asbury's echo stitches I got you a ruler and I will be mailing this to you and it has the counts on it for 11, 14, 16, 18, 22, 25, 28, and 32. So it's like a, a strip that's folded in half. It's a 12 inch ruler and it's like folded in half and it's magnetic also. So Rhonda, I will get this to you. Um, I need to remember to put that in the mail. But um, so the, those are at Hobby Lobby where the embroidery floss is. There's like some little gadgets hanging there and those are up over top of the floss. So um, I want to show you my whip, but um, Darren and Peggy, if either of you are watching, turn and don't look now because you can't see this. This is the only time I'm going to show this, guys. Um, my son's getting married. So this the gift. So Darren and Peggy, don't look in case you're watching this video. I don't think they do, but um, just in case. So this is the pattern. And I made a mistake. Her favorite color is red. And so I changed this word to red. What I didn't realize until last night is that it's supposed to be part of a branch. And right there, there are leaves coming out of it. So what do I do? It's a beautiful tee. I love it. Yes, there's a stitch missing there because that's where the crow's leg goes. So that's done on purpose. So I did this red. But you see those little nubs right there and there? That's where the leaves are supposed to be coming out. Someone suggested to use fall leaves, like different colors. And I could do that, like a reddish yellow. I don't, I just don't want to take the whole thing out. Um, my other thought was maybe just take this part out and redo it in brown so that on both tees that part is brown and the rest of it is the red so tell me what you think about that because i don't want to show that anymore but that's what i was working on last night this is wonderful to stitch on now it's not real primitive they don't like primitives i shouldn't say it's not real primitive it's not primitive at all they don't like primitives it's kind of yellow on this side, like a cream color, and then the other side is bright white. And this was gifted to me, and or a thrift store or whatever, I don't know. But it says Fabric Flare. You can see what's on there. And over here it says Ivory, and I it's a 28 count. Wonderful to stitch on. Really like it. I could probably do it without the magnifier. But for myself, you know, I like the primitives, but then I made myself a little needle minder. I didn't used to use needle minders, but now I do. It's hard to see, but it's a salt box house and it matches my project bag. And I just cut a piece of fabric out with the house on it and it's out in the other room. Um, but I just cut that little house out and then glued it in and then put this, um, I'll show you what I got. 
instead of putting glass on it because that makes it heavier, it's resin dome sticker. And I got them on Amazon, which I'll put the link down below, but I want to show them to you. So they come on sheets like this, package of 100, and I don't know if you can get smaller packages or not, but they're just little stickers, and they're, um, well, let me see, figure out what you're doing. Uh, it's hard to see, but it's like a dome, and you just, it's, it's like rubber, and you just stick it over your fabric or paper if you were making paper, but that's, they're, they're really great because I've tried glass and the glasses that, what are they called? Bevels? Bezels? They're really heavy. No, the bezels is the metal piece, right? So this is, um, Amy's store. Let me see. It's a website, but I got them on Amazon and I'll put the link down below. So if you make needle minders, those, that works out good. Um, what else do I want to show you? So I showed you my whip. I showed you my finishes. I want to show you some um, generous happy mail that I got. Now, I had asked a couple places if they would want to donate door prizes for my retreat in March. And um, some of them did. And I thank you. And you were very generous. So these are, I showed this on my live stream, but I know a lot of you didn't watch it. Um, just, I can tell by the count, the viewer count, this are all from Primrose Cottage. So I'm going to show you all of these and these are all going to be door prizes at the, um, retreat. So when I call the name out at the retreat, the girls can go up and pick something from the table. So, um, there's a lot here. They were super generous. This is summer house. So go over and support Primrose Cottage. If you like their patterns, this is Firework Kisses. And these are small. This one's only stitch count 43 by 69. So these are really small. This one is established 1776. That one is 43 by 43 stitch count. United We Stand. That's 43 by 43. Land That I Love. You get the theme here. Our Smalls Exchange theme is patriotic for the retreat. 43 by 43. And I told them that, so they sent me all patriotic patterns. Um, Liberty and Love. 37 by 40. That one's even smaller. Um, I'll take a break here and ask you a question. So um, for the Nashville Needlework Retreat, this would be the, the question this week. Um, have you ordered anything? All I have ordered is the Primrose Cottage Patriotic Quaker. That's the only thing I think I'm going to order. Because I have so many now that I want to do that I haven't been able to get to. And I just want to work on the ones I have. So this is Happy Independence Day. That one is 100 by 48. So it's just a little bit bigger. Home of the Free. Because of the Brave. And I love that saying. That one is 85 by 69. So those are all pretty small. And then there's two larger ones here. So the first one is Patriotic Picnic here. And that one is 149 by 73 stitch count. And last but not least is Star Spangled Street. That way. I like that. The Prim Houses, 195 by 42. Now, if I did this on coffee stained or walnut stained fabric, that would be awesome. That would be my style. So those were gifted to me from Primrose Cottage. And thank you again to the girls there at Primrose Cottage. Those will all go to the retreat and be used as door prizes. Now, someone else that um, donated generously is the shop that I do model stitching for, or model punching, and that is the Shepherd's Needle. So she sent me 40 of these, because there's gonna be 40 girls attending. And that one's turned around the wrong way, so you can put your threads on there, thread cards. And those are like cardstock. And also I have business cards for everybody. And 
40 skeins of this thread. And this is Classic Colorworks Jakey Brown. And she sent me 40 of them. So everyone attending will get one of these. And I probably shouldn't have told you that because it's gone in the goodie bags. But anyway, that I just wanted to give her thanks and recognition for sending me all of this. And so thank you to Ann Thompson at the Shepherd's Needle. Support her. She does ship. It is an online shop and a brick and mortar shop. I have, um, I think I've showed some other things that were donated and then there's something else coming in the mail this week. And then some things are being donated at the retreat from people that are going and they're going to give them to me there at the retreat. So, um, I will give recognition to them there because I do videotape the um, giveaways and stuff. So um, these are the punch needle patterns that Anne has sent me to work on. And she sends me all of the supplies and everything. And then I just do them when I can and send them back to her. So this is with my needle and thread, Funky Snowman. These, I love the Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread punch needle patterns. So that one is called Funky Snowman. There's the colors for it. And this is Saint Noel. So you will be seeing some punch needle in the upcoming videos. Probably not until after the retreat, though, which is the middle of March. There's the flosses for those because... I've got a trip this coming weekend and then I get back and I have a week and then I leave again. Um, and in that week, I'll be getting ready for the retreat. Fun in the snow. Little snowman. Isn't that cute? I've never seen this one before. Some of these I have, but there's the flosses. I love the colors. And then these are from Stone and Thread. I've done some of theirs before. Candy canes and Christmas trees. And I don't know if these are going to be ornaments or what she's going to do with these. But down here you can see they're like little ceramic pins that are buttons that go in the middle. So those, these are going to be good for beginners because they're really, they're small and really simple. And there's the flosses for those. And then this one is stone and thread Merry Christmas bags. I've done some of the little bags before, and um, there's the name of it. They're only maybe that high and maybe that wide. They're really small, and then you can, like, tuck some greenery in there. And there's the flosses for those. So those are going to keep me busy for a while once I get started on those. i got to get, get out of this funk I'm in first. And I know it'll go away. I'm just tired. And I think it's, I'm thinking about everything that's coming up. And that kind of, you know, tires you out. So um, Thursday, I'm going to Gaffney, South Carolina to with a camping, a ladies camping group. And some of us, well, I'm staying in a cabin. I'm not taking my camper. But anyway, there's a clubhouse there and they're going to be quilting all weekend. And I don't quilt. But I wanted to go, and they told me I could come and do my needlework, but I wanted to take something that was kind of um, make me feel like I'm supposed to be there. So on my last, um, might have been on the live stream, I think, I showed a project bag that I was going to make out of wool. And I don't know if it was on the floss tube or the live stream, but, <clears throat> excuse me, the book is in my car, so I don't have it to even show you. Um, I can insert pictures here and what the back looks like and what the front looks like. And it's, I've got the wool and everything cut. It's all ready. It's out in the car. And I'm going to make that. Well, then I got thinking about it. And somebody said to me when I showed the needle minder on my Facebook page, she said, do you sell your project bags? And I said, no, because I've never made one. Well, then that kind of, you know, put that idea in my head. So here's where the addiction comes in. Um, I was cutting stuff out for that one. And then I started looking at the other ones and, you know, looking at the one that Wanda made for me. And I was like, I don't know, like, look at those miter corners. And I don't really like to work on a sewing machine. 
So I pulled out some fabric that from my cabinet here and I decided I was going to try to make a cloth one because the other one's wool. So I wanted to try to make a cloth one like these that I have. Well, I probably haven't done a zipper since um, high school days. I used to make my own clothes when I was in high school. And then when my son was born, my oldest son in the 70s, I would make his baby clothes. But I don't think I've done a zipper since high school. So here's my addiction, guys, girls. Um, once I started pulling fabric out and saying, well, this will make a cute bag. It was like, well, this one will make a cute bag. And this one will make a cute bag. And this one will make a cute bag. So I sat on the floor today because my table space is only right here. And I, I have a folding table I could have put up, but I just didn't feel like it. And I'm going to show you all this, but I cut out stuff for 10 project bags. 10. Like, I'm crazy. I haven't even made one. And I've got all this stuff cut out for 10. Now, some of them are, some of them are going to be little notion bags like this that match. Like this came with this and also floss straps and a needle minder and some other things. Um, but, and, oh, and a thread bed also came with it. So I thought, well, some of the pieces of fabric I had left were too small to make one of these, which my bags aren't going to big this big. I think this is 11 by 13 and mine are going to be more like eight by 10, which is the size I prefer. And Wanda also, in case you haven't seen it, she made me this one, which is an eight by 10 because I don't use a hoop. I don't use a Q-snap and I mostly do some all, small projects. So I just wanted a small one. So I sent her this fabric, which is gorgeous. I got it at a thrift store. And she made me these, um, this one, and then the other one that I use that's out in the other room. So the little notion bags. And then today she told me the measurements and everything. So I didn't have, sorry, my nose is itching. Oh, here's, yeah. So I didn't have fabric to do everything big. So some of them are just going to be small, um, but it is addicting. Have you ever tried to do these? Um, you know, I haven't even made one yet, but. I'm ready. I'm ready to make them. And I ordered some wonder clips because I saw how much they were in the stores and I looked on Amazon and they were like 40 for $3.99. So they'll be here tomorrow. And so I'm going to show you and the, um, the interfacing that I need will be here tomorrow. So I'm going to show you what I got. So I did go to Joanne's. I got 12 gauge, um, clear vinyl. So I've got all that cut. So Okay, these, this fabric, look at that. Isn't that adorable? This is a fat quarter that I got at a shop, a quilt store in Jonesboro, Tennessee, and it was the end of the fabric, so they don't have it anymore. So this is gonna be um, the regular eight by 10 one. All right, yeah, and then this will be the lining, the inside, and then this fabric, it's upside down, but turn it. That will be, um, I'm making a mess here. That will be what goes above, like around the zipper, those strips. So, and I watched tutorials. I watched Elizabeth Ann can stitch and I watched um, another one and I'm getting ready to watch another one tonight. And some girls do them different than the others, but it really, really helps to watch it ahead of time and took away that anxiety because it doesn't look very hard at all. So when I go, to the quilting thing this weekend, those girls know how to do this stuff. So if I need any help, they're gonna be there. But I'm also gonna have the YouTube there with my phone and I'm gonna follow it step by step so I don't mess up. Hopefully I don't mess up. I'll, I'll do one with um, my least favorite fabric first in case I screw it up. So, okay, this one is Teresa Kogut fabric. And I bought this when I was in um, Pennsylvania in Lancaster County in December there's a quilt store called the log cabin quilt shop and that's where I found this now the, I only got a quarter yard of it I didn't know what I was going to do with it I just wanted some of it and I was like gonna fancy cut out a deer for a back of a pillow or something but this is as big as I could get out of it because of the direction and the quarter yard is this way it's only was I think it was only 10 inches so it wasn't even a maybe is it maybe a quarter yard. Anyway, I, I'm not doing the math, but it's 10 inches high and that's as much as I could do. So that one's going to be a little smaller. Some of these are going to be odd sizes. 
And then at the quilt store in Jonesboro, yesterday, I guess it was, I took it with me to get a coordinating fabric, and that's the fabric I picked. I wanted the color that was in the deer. And, you know, in person, that color is like right spot on. I don't, it, it's a little different on, on the phone, but in person, that is exactly perfect. So I, I have the quilt batting or the interfacing coming and it's, I think it's um, fusible fleece and I have to go get zippers. So tomorrow I'm gonna get zippers. And then this is another one. Um, bought this fabric last year and I was gonna make a project bag without the clear front and without a zipper. It was just gonna be, I think they called it an envelope bag. And so this, I think I bought at Hobby Lobby. I thought it was really cute. So that's the main fabric of the bag. And then the inside lining will be this, which that grayish blue right there, it will pull that out in person. It matches perfect. So that'll be the lining inside. That's that one. When I go to Pennsylvania in March, the middle of March, I'm going to be back in Pennsylvania for my son's wedding. And I'm going to go, I can't find primitive fabrics around here. I, they just don't carry them. But that's Amish country up there. And there's a lot more primitive fabrics up there. So I definitely don't want to be making project bags full time, but I want to try to find some primitive fabrics and offer some of those if I can be any good at making these because, um, I may be getting ahead of myself here, but I, I don't know of any that really offer like the primitive fabrics. And these aren't primitive. These are just some that I have that I liked. Now this one is going to be the little notion bag because I was trying to use up the rest of this fabric. So that's actually going to be the inside, the lining, and then the main like outside fabric on the back will be this other one, this um, brown. So some of these, like I said, they're just going to be the little notion bags and I got a half a yard of the vinyl and I had plenty to do all of these and still have some left um, so there's two of those and then when I go back to Pennsylvania I'll get enough fabric to make the large ones the larger ones to match because those are just like I said the um, the notion bags so I had enough to make one large one but well it's still it's not going to be really big it's going to be an odd size because just because of the way the direction of the pattern on the fabric and things like that now this one y'all are gonna laugh at this one but you know my name is privies and prims and you know what a privy is it's an outhouse so years ago i bought fabric that had outhouses on it and i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but i saw it in the thrift store and i got it but many, many years ago, I had the same fabric and I had uh, the house I was living in had a window in the bathroom and I made outhouse curtains and I had all outhouse themed decorations in my bathroom. I even took a wooden toilet seat and um, I wood burned an outhouse scene on it. And I think this is all in the the video that shows, um, that talks about how I got my business name, how I came up with my business name. I think I showed these things and I'll link that video down below in case you want to watch it. In case you're curious how I came up with my business name. But I, I even at Christmas time, I had a little Christmas, like a little tabletop two foot tree in there. And when I would go in gift shops, I would look for outhouse Christmas ornaments and they're out there. They are out there. So this fabric has outhouses on it. Isn't that fun? No, I don't know if anybody would want a project bag with outhouses on it. And then I have this, this is kind of a flannel, which is a dark brown, and that'll be the inside, the lining. And then these strips go around the zipper. So I had enough for two eight by 10 bags with this. Let me know what you think of that. Would you want a project bag with outhouses on it? I don't know, maybe I'm weird. I know, I know, I'm unique. I'm the middle child of five. I'm supposed to be unique. So I have two 
eight by 10 bags of that. And then there was enough left to do two of the notion bags that will have this fabric for everything. There's no coordinating fabric for the inside. It's that for the whole thing. And those, those are my addiction. I wanted to cut more. There's more fabric in there, you know? I just like, and I want to go buy more fabric and I want to do more, but I haven't even made one yet. So anyway, that's that. I think that is all. Um, look around. Like I said, I have some things coming in the mail that I will show next week and I'll try to get some pictures um, when I go to this quilting. I guess you could call it a retreat this weekend. And there's going to be, I think, 13 of us there. We're going to do potluck meals, um, probably cook breakfast together. We're going to have um, Saturday morning, we're going to a quilt store and then out to lunch. Saturday night, there's going to be live music. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, I did rent a little cabin because it has a bathroom and a kitchenette. And my camper does not have a bathroom and it's still cold. And I just don't feel like taking it out yet. But I will be taking it out for my retreat in the middle of March. So um, I think that's everything. So question was, what did you order for? Did you pre-order anything for the needlework market? Um, I've only ordered one. I, and most of my patterns actually I buy from um, Etsy because I like primitives and there's not a whole lot of them out there in the pattern worlds. Um, not Forgotten Farm has primitives and uh, most of the other ones I know of are on Etsy. So some of them that call themselves primitives are not my kind of primitives. So I wouldn't call them primitives, but other people would. So I just, like I said, most of mine come from Etsy. So I think... I covered everything. Um, just let me know in the comments. What would you do with um, this pattern? You know, I'm going to show it quick. And I think that's it. And did you order anything? Yeah. Did you get any Nate Burkus fabric? I know a bunch of you got the Nate Burkus upholstery fabric. So I'm just kind of rambling on now, right? I did get some other fat quarters when I was at that shop. They have a clearance room and the fat quarters are $2. Got that one. It's dark green. Looks kind of teal when I'm showing it here, but it's dark green. And this one, which is like a yellowish, like a dull prim yellow for pillow backs and stuff. Um, this fabric is flannel that I've had for years. So this is what I mean by the primitive fabric. It, I don't find anything like this around here. And I just have little pieces, but I thought if I could, it's got strings all over it, but I thought if I could find something to coordinate with this that was also flannel, I could do like a top piece and a bottom piece and do something with it. But the quilt store I went to, they don't even sell flannel. They have none. So I'd have to go to Joanne's and then I doubt I'd find anything like this. But I am going to hit the fabric stores in Pennsylvania what I can find. So let me know what you think about my project bags. Um, I probably will take them to my retreat to sell and if what doesn't sell will go on Etsy and um, a couple of them I might keep. Like I might keep the camper one. I want to keep a Teresa Kogut one. I don't know about the outhouses because I don't like bright colors and it's bright green but we'll see. I don't know. I'm rambling. Let me know what you think. Give me your opinions. See you next time. Bye.